Welcome. Uh, this is just an addendum to the AC and DC generators video. Um, I promised to show you a, um, an AC and a DC generator from the lab. Um, this is our really old um, dynamo, which is great because it actually has both a split ring and the slip ring commutators. So you've seen this already demonstrated in class. We turn this handle here. Um, unfortunately, it's so old that this has been a bit loose and it then turns, turns this spin over here, this rotor, and it rotates it in the presence of a magnetic field. I'm just gonna take the magnetic field off because it probably falls off when I move it. Um, so we're just gonna have a look in very into detail into the two commutators that are present on this, um, this, this, this generator. So I'm just getting this in the right position. I've got to go in the opposite direction. That's better. Okay, so this is uh, a both an AC and a DC generator in one demonstration version, and um, depends on which one you attach. This is the one up the front. You don't attach both at once. Okay, it's just it's demonstrating whether or not you want to get an AC um, out or a DC out. This one here, if you have a look at, it, is the split ring commutator. So we've seen this before, that's just a barrel. So if we wanted to, um, to get DC, we would, um, we would connect to our external circuit through these two um, points here. So to put two wires into there, and then we'd get DC out. Um, so this is the split ring, and it is just a barrel of copper, or brass in this case, um, which is being separated by an insulating material um, it's the old-fashioned plastic or bakelite in this case because it's so old. So that's, if I wanted to get DC out, I'd use this ring here, okay, this commutator. But if I wanted to get AC out, I'd use the back commutator pair, uh, the slip rings. Um, so we would attach at these two points here and we would um, have one, and this brush here is attached to this ring and that ring is attached to the black wire. And this black wire goes through, through the hole in that one and attaches itself to the top part of this coil. Just give a little bit more, okay, to the top part of this coil. If I turn all the way around, we see that this brush is attached to this ring and that ring is attached to the red wire and that red wire is attached to the bottom of this coil. So it doesn't matter how this turns, the Black wire is attached to the top and the red is to the bottom, okay? So it is just taking the um, EMF, the current that is generated in the coil and presenting it to the outside external circuit through these two here. So depending on what type of commutator you want, so, uh, you select the different types of current are presented to the external circuit. So the slip ring, and there they are. So you can see them slipping around there. They always are in contact. These brushes are in contact with the same ring and the same end of the coil each time. And the top one, this one here, this is the DC commutator, which is the split ring. And remembering a split ring reverses the, um, the current every half turn. And this time it's reversing the current coming out of the coil. So a reversal of a reversal will be a forward direction. So as it goes, comes out, as it turns, remembering um, the current in the coil should reverse, but the reversal is reversed and we get a DC um, current coming out. Um, to show the DC current coming out, I'm gonna use a more modern version. This is the DC generator that we saw earlier. Um, Okay. Um, why, how do I know it's a DC generator? Well, uh, we have a look in at the commutator. So have a look at the commutator on this one. I'll zoom all the way in, get the lights off it, if I possibly can. Okay, there we are. Now, if we have a look here, as I think you'll see that this barrel is um, cut into two halves. They're not exactly two um, equals, uh, you know, halves like the uh, two big C's like in the old uh, the other one that we saw. 
but in reality, it's just half a barrel each. So as this turns, this, com this brush over here is attached to one side of the barrel, and this brush on the other side is attached to the other side of the barrel. Okay, I'm just trying to get some shade on from that uh, light which is directly above us. Okay, so this becomes a DC generator. Now to show the DC, I'm going to attach Now, if I was to turn it, I'd simply get this light bulb here lighting up. That just tells us that current's coming out. We need to show that it's a DC current. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach um, some electrodes to both ends of the current coming out of the coil there. Okay, so, and then I've attached, let's have a look. I've attached those wires to our little Okay, we've seen this thing here before. This is a cathode ray oscilloscope. It's just a glorified voltmeter. That's all it's doing. So it is going to measure the voltage that is coming out through these two wires. And as I turn, let's get myself around the right way, get that nice and straightened up there. Turn it all around. Okay, as I just turn it and turn it, you'll notice that's going up, it's not going into a nice sign shape, it's going up and down, just going to give you more. I might just turn it the other way around so you can actually see it better. Just give me a few seconds to get this. Okay. There we go. Now, if I do it a nice constant velocity, otherwise, a constant rotation, otherwise, what you're seeing here is an absolute value sine curve. Okay? It's not going into the negative. Okay? And if I go twice as fast, you'll notice that um, twice as fast means that the curve itself gets thinner because there's more revolutions per second and the EMF is greater. So I might just position it a bit further down so you can see what happens because we know it's a DC curve, it's an absolute value curve. So here we go. That's a few revolutions per second. You look how fat they are. It's an absolute value sine curve. And now, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's a DC and AC generator from our lovely Lab 4. Okay.